The medieval era lasted from approximately 500 AD to 1500 AD and it is perhaps one of the most tumultuous, dangerous and fascinating times in history and it is one that viewers cannot seem to get enough of on the big screen. As the medieval era has been a regular historic backdrop for a plethora of films since the start of cinema. This list will give my top 10 recommendations of films based during the medieval times that I think most viewers of this channel will probably not have had the chance to watch yet and I think these are all excellent movies that everyone will really enjoy. But before we begin, don't forget if you love anything to do with historical movies or historical TV shows, then subscribe to my channel History Spark. And also don't forget to subscribe to my monthly newsletter to keep up to date with all the latest news in historical movies and historical TV shows. At number 10, It Is Medieval, a film from the Czech Republic based on the legendary Hussite commander John Ziska. One of the most successful military leaders of all time, having never lost a battle in which he was the commander of his forces. And this movie tells the story of his rebellion against Henry III of Rosenberg. Medieval does a good job of bringing his story to life and it has some decent acting by most of the cast with Michael Caine and Ben Foster being the two standout performances for me. There's a lot to like about Medieval, but it is a very rapid paced film with a lot of events trying to be told in a short time frame, which does hurt the quality of the film to a certain degree. But if you're looking for a movie which has a great central character using some really unique and extraordinary military strategies to defeat larger forces, then Medieval is the movie for you. At number 9, it is Furious, a Russian epic period film which covers the siege of Rizon by the Mongols in 1237. And the plot is based off of the tale of the destruction of Rizon, which tells about the actions of Russian knight Patek Lavrat, who led the heavily outnumbered Russian forces against the Mongol hordes of Batu Khan. This was the first Russian based historical movie I had seen in a long time and I really enjoyed it as the plot was simple and easy to follow and the main character was fairly well developed as well. The movie did a really great job of bringing the power of the Mongols to the screen in a really fantastic manner which was believable and engaging. Furious is a bit lacking in terms of cinematography and set pieces but overall for a B grade Russian film I really enjoyed Furious and I think all viewers of this channel will do so as well. At number 8, it is Ironclad, a historical film based around the siege of Rochester Castle in which a small group of rebels and noblemen during the First Baron's War try to hold Rochester Castle against King John and his forces after he revokes on the promises he agreed to during the signing of the Magna Carta. This film follows a generic B-grade formula but what the film does get right is its battle scenes and siege tactics which show just how difficult it is for a small force to protect a fortress from invaders. The general plot and storyline is interesting that the viewer feels compelled to watch the story to the very end. This is not the best medieval film ever created by any means but it is a great recommendation for someone looking for an easy and enjoyable watch on a free evening. At number 7, it is The Physician, a historical drama based on the novel of the same name by Noah Gordon. The film's central plot focuses on an orphan boy named Rob and his determination to study medicine and prevent others from dying from easily treatable diseases in first century England. This movie is unique as it brings to life a topic very rarely discussed within medieval films, and that is how medical treatments and surgeries were performed during the medieval era we often get a small scene of a soldier getting a limb amputated or some rudimentary medical practices being performed on a king but I have never seen a movie delve so deep into the subject as the physician. This movie also really highlights the differences between English and Persian society during the time and if you're looking for a movie that is well acted, perfectly paced and brings a unique spin to medieval films then the physician is my recommendation for you. At number 6 it is The Black Death, a film that does a great job of mixing two different genres, horror and history together and with the focus being on the breakout of the bubonic plague it is a historical topic which can indeed be utilized effectively in a horror and supernatural genre. Black Death does a fascinating job of displaying how the superstitious and customs in medieval England during the time would have caused mass paranoia as the disease continued to ravage the land. Black Death has an interesting but not very original plot and Sean Bean and Eddie Redmayne do a great job of carrying the film which needed their strong performances to cover the various plot holes and missteps within the film. 
The Black Death is a great movie to watch on an evening as it does a fantastic job of blending horror and supernatural elements within an interesting historical context. And even though it may not be a revolutionary or original film, it is still a highly enjoyable watch nonetheless. At number 5 it is Tristan and Isolde, an epic drama based around the medieval romantic legend of Tristan and Isolde. The primary plot of this movie is based around one of the members of the English royal family falling in love with a princess from the Irish royal family who is their bitter rivals and sworn enemies. This is a great film produced by the legendary Ridley Scott and his stars James Franco, Sophia Miles and Henry Cavill in leading roles and all three of them give excellent performances. The storyline leaves a little bit to be desired but overall Tristan and Isolde is a fairly decent medieval film that rarely ever gets mentioned or talked about. The fourth spot on this list goes to Panipat, an epic war film based around the events of the Third War of Panipat where the Maratha forces are facing an invading Afghan force led by Ahmed Shah Abdali. This film focuses around the preparations made by the Maratha general Sada Shiv Rao in advance of this Afghan army and there's a secondary plot focusing around the military and political intrigue that occurs before any major battle can take place. The acting here is stellar with Sanjay Dutt giving a fantastic performance as the antagonist of the film but I do have to say Arjun Kapoor's performance was a little bit lackluster as the protagonist of the movie. There's a lot to like about Bonnie Pot. There's a strong storyline filled with lots of plot twists as well as some excellent cinematography and battle scenes as well. So if you're looking for an Indian medieval movie that you may have missed, then Panipat is my recommendation for you. The third spot on this list goes to the Academy Award winning movie Lion in Winter, which focuses on the life of Henry II and the various internal court politics based around who will be the successor to his throne with three sons who are viable candidates for the role all throwing their hat in the run. King Henry finds himself bombarded on all sides from beneficiaries of each party trying to influence him to choose their pick as the next king of England. This is not your typical medieval movie and is definitely one of the best acted historical dramas you will ever witness. But there is a small criticism that the film does look a bit outdated by today's standards and some audiences may be put off by the limited visual effects and some odd camera angles of the film. But this is one of the best movies ever created and you owe it to yourself to watch this movie as soon as possible. The second spot on this list goes to Mongol, a biographical film which magnificently tells the story of Genghis Khan from his childhood to his rise to becoming the warlord that finally unites the Mongol factions into one deadly unit. This movie does a great job of slowly building the story of Genghis Khan and his family and it spends a surprisingly long amount of time delving into his troubled childhood and the huge number of obstacles and struggles he would have to overcome before becoming even a minor warlord in Mongolia. Mongol has great acting especially by Tada Nobu Asano as Timujin being the standout performance for me within this film. The third act of the movie though is very rushed and it depicts Timuji's rise to power a bit too quickly for my liking but other than that, Mongol is the first movie you should watch if you want to learn more about Mongol history. At number 1 we have Arn the Knight Templar, a fictional story based around a Knights Templar named Arn. This is actually a two part film series which is based off of the best selling Crusades book series by Han Julia. This movie sees a fictional character named Arn become a Knights Templar and he is a witness or a catalyst to many real historical events such as the Battle of Mount Gizzard and the Battle of Hattin. Arn the Knight Templar is also the most expensive film ever created in the history of Swedish cinema and it is a fantastic feat of storytelling, cinematography and bringing a semi-accurate historical representation of the Knights Templar to our screens and it is my recommendation of a medieval film that I feel most people may not have had the chance to see yet. So lastly I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching this video, if you did enjoy it please do like and share this video with others and if you haven't done so already subscribe to my channel History Spark as I post videos on historical movies and historical TV shows each and every week. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.